Well, we will move on to our speakers for the day, but uh, we'll start with our day chair, Doug Schmidt. Um, hold on a second. Okay. All right. So um, Doug's bio, it's always interesting, but uh, we'll start with his birth. He was born in uh, September 5th of 1960 at Methodist Hospital in St. Louis Park. Ellen, his wife, was born three months later at the same hospital by the same doctor. So meant to be. Um, he graduated from Blake in 1979, graduated with, from St. Olaf in 1983. He married Ellen in August of 1984. And then I'm surprised the weights of his kids aren't on here, but his first son, Andy, was born in 1989. Teddy was born in 1990. Greta was born in 1995. Um, he started at Schmidt Music in 1983. Uh, he represents the fourth generation of family ownership and management. Um, his hobbies, hobbies are uh, all types of sailing, singing, bell choir, um, trombone, tuba, water and snow skiing, golf, and hockey. Um, all right, associations. Um, he's a member of the Evergreen Club, Thursday Musical Advisory Board, Minnesota Band Directors Association, National Association of Mu uh, Music Merchants, uh, Minneapolis City of Lakes Rotary Club, of course, Trinity Lutheran Church in Long Lake since 1979, Wyzetta Symphony Orchestra Board, Phi Beta Mu, um, International Bandmasters Fraternity. Uh, he is a fourth generation Rotarian. I don't know if many of you know this, um, but his great grandfather, uh, Paul Schmidt, joined Minneapolis Number no. Nine in 1911. Um, it was started in 1910, so shortly after. Uh, his father, Robert Paul Schmidt, was the president of Number no. Nine in 1982. And Doug, who joined City of Lakes in 1986, just two years after we started here, uh, was president in 2000, from 2005 to 2006. So with that, I'll Welcome, Doug, up to the podium. He's laughing, that's okay. <laughs> oh, well, good morning. Doot, doot, doot. All right. So uh, I'm so glad Tony mentioned, uh, the you know, living for the small things in Earth and in life. And um, I just want to thank the uh, exchange students uh, Sophie and Carol, um, because they didn't read the small print when they signed up to be exchange students. So one of the little small things that they didn't read was, you have to invite all of us to your weddings. <clears throat> and it, they're paid for by your host parents and everything, you know, the flights, the food, the hotel, all that stuff. And, you know, and, and so, uh, Carol, we're hoping you get married down in Ipanema because I hear their weddings are really fun. <clears throat> and and Sophie, we hope we get to go to Barcelona. So you fall in some fall in love with somebody over in Barcelona because that'll really be fun. And so um, that's as much as I've got for you. So come on up, girls, and tell us all about it. All right, I'll get those wedding invitations out shortly. Well, there are a lot of things you're not supposed to do on exchange. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Sophie. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Usually I just come for the breakfast, but today I actually have something to say. Um, uh, I was an outbound exchange student last year to Spain. And before I left, I did a presentation here about some of my values that connect with living abroad. And the one that I focused on was adventure. And so today, as I reflect on my exchange and my experience, I'd like to bring it back to that adventure and a couple other ones that were really important to me, which were uh, community and empathy. Those turned out to be very crucial for my exchange. Um, is there a clicker or something that I, or should I just like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so my, I had two host families when I was in Spain, and the first one was all of that. They were adventurous, they they partied, they traveled, they kite surfed, which I got to try. That's not me, I never got up off my knees. But <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, they just shoved me into the culture and I was whisked away in in the the vibrancy and the color of, of Spain. And then I transitioned to my second host family and 
I was disappointed. Um, they were, it was just, it was a much slower household. It was, um, they watched the news every night. They stayed home most days. They went to church and it, it just wasn't that same adventure. They didn't share that value that I had. And a big part of living with them was I had to spend a lot of time on the Metro. Um, and they lived far outside of the city. And so I was going back and forth between their house and the city. And it felt like I was wasting my exchange on the train. I was spending so much time on there and it felt like their fault because there was already so much frustration with the slowness of, of that transition. Um, and at the time I was keeping a journal and one of the things that I was trying to write down were every time I saw something that delighted me. And I realized as I was looking back at them that a lot of these things happened on the Metro. There was one time, <laughs> there was one time there was a little boy who was leaning over the edge of the platform waiting for his train to come. And he looked down and scooped back just a little bit to make sure his toes were behind that yellow line. Um, there was uh, an elderly man and a woman who were standing on the metro, there was only one seat left, and they were fighting with each other about who should take the seat. And somebody stood up so that they could both sit down and they started trying to get other people to take the seat. Um, there was one time, it was rush hour, everybody got onto one train of the metro and the conductor got on the loudspeaker and he said, you know, there are, there are 10 doors on here, you don't all have to get on the first one. <laughs> and everybody laughed at that. Um, so as I realized that there's actually a lot to love about this thing that I hated at first, that was what allowed me to sort of realize, you know, if the Metro is not so bad, then maybe my host family's not so bad. And I was able to go into that situation with more empathy and more curiosity. And this was my home, the second home. And I started to see the beauty and I realized that they don't share my value of adventure, but they stay home and watch the news because they value family and they go to church and they stay in their town because they value community. And uh, what I learned was that I, I actually really needed that community to be able to live my value of adventure and not to kiss up to all the Rotarians in the room, but I needed that Rotary community. And that was what allowed me to travel and make the most of my exchange. So I started calling other exchange students um, this was Barcelona. I called one of my Swedish friends who lived there and I stayed with him for a weekend. We spent the whole time looking at the ceiling of the Sangrada Familia. If you've ever been there, it's incredible. It was so worth it. Um, I went to the Camino de Santiago. It was a, it was a pilgrimage in the north of Spain. And originally it was a trip organized for the Northern district. And I was in the Southern district, but I just asked if I could go and they said, yes. And we spent a week in the north of Spain going through fields and forests. We walked through a herd of cows led by a little Spanish couple that didn't speak Spanish or English. They spoke the dialect of the region. Um, and we did get food poisoning on this trip, so that wasn't ideal. But it was just, uh, that was a phenomenal experience. I got to go to, I took a 35-year Ryanair flight to Gran Canaria. I surfed for the first time. I've never been so sore in my life. Um, and I visited, again, two of my exchange student friends there. And so that Rotary community was what allowed me to, um, to live that adventure. And so I went, in, I went into exchange with my heart set on adventure. That was what I wanted. That's what I was looking for. And I realized that you need community and you need empathy to make that happen. So I want to say thank you to the Rotary community for allowing me to have that adventure. Thank you. Um, I think it's a little too, yeah, okay. No. <laughs> so yeah, I think most of the people know me, but I'm gonna present myself again. Hi, my name is Carol, or and I'm from Brazil. <laughs> And I'm very excited. And I'm very excited being here in my exchange year. So this is my topics. I did it that just to have a little bit of uh, what I'm going what I'm going to say. So I like going to be a little bit by, by myself and also by my country and a little bit of my exchange year so far. So you can oh oh it's here. <laughs> so my name is uh, Caroline Cândido Brito. 
but you can call me Caroline or Carol, and I have 16 years old. I'm from uh, Recife, Pernambuco, Brazil, and I'm from the District 4500, and my hobbies are playing the piano, playing volleyball, drawing, reading, and watching movies are serious. I enjoy, I really enjoy meeting new people and new places, and I'm really excited about my exchange year, like, in general. So these are some pictures of me in Brazil. So this is me playing the piano one time on Christmas. This is um, 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 my, some of my hobbies drawing. This is my district from Brazil. So there is a lot of people going everywhere um, around the world. And yeah. And this one, it is from my volleyball team there. This is my school and this is my close friends. I miss them, but I'm loving my new life here too. So it's been very worth it. Um. So yeah, this is my family. Um, this is my dad. This is me. This is my mom. And this is Nicole or Nick, my sister. That probably she will be a future exchange student. I don't know from I don't know if she's going to be here. I'm trying to say like, hey, it's good here, but she's freaking about it. So I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna say a little bit of how how did he, uh enter my life and how I knew about my exchange program. So my godmother, Lizia, she always supported me to do this. Like, she was telling to, hey, Carol, you're supposed to do that. And I was like, mm, I'm going to think about it. But, like, after she showed me, like, how how her life changed with her two children went to here, U.S., and also she hosted two action students in her house, um, one, I think, from U.S., another one from Finland. And she had such a great time showing the pictures and everything. I was like, oh, my gosh, I think I can do that. I think this is very good. So this is how I entered my exchange year here. And I'm going to talk a little bit also of Brazil. So a continental, continental country. So I'm going to give you some basic facts, just to know a little bit about my country. So um, the official name is Federal Republic of Brazil. The, uh, the language is Portuguese. Uh, the capital is Brasilia, this one. And it's a very... It's a very big country and it's like 8 million 500 uh, kilometers. It's a very big one. And this is our currency that I put here in the one picture. This is the hell. And this is like to show the diversity of Brazil. Like if somebody ever think about making an exchange, I think Brazil is a very good good place to do, to do your exchange. This is like some pictures. This is um, one island we have in Brazil called Fernandes de Noronha. It's so pretty. It's also from my state. This is um, kind of like a semi-arid place. We call it Caetinga. This is, of course, the Amazonic River. And this is like a sa savanna, Brazilian savanna. We call it Cerrado. And we have so many other different cultures too, not only for diversity of nature, but also from um, different people, different nationalities. If you go to some parts of Brazil, you're going to see totally different parts. So it's very fun. And this is my district. It's actually funny because here there is like, uh, there's a part of Minnesota and a part of Wisconsin. But in Brazil, my district has three states on it. So I have my state, Pernambuco, Paraíba, and Rio Grande do Norte. So um, it's very big but we don't have so many action students. We are, our plan is to go on to 50, but now it's 26, I think. So we're gonna get, we're gonna get there. And this is my, uh, my state, Pernambuco, the North Lion. The reason it call, it's called like that is because during the 16th century, uh, my, uh, my state got colonized a little bit of the Dutch people. So in, in the flags, there was the lion, the North Lion. So that's the reason why we call that. It's like a funny thing. And just a little bit of my state, the capital where I live is Recife over there. So it's all right the coast. And it's one of the oldest states of Brazil. And also for three months in 19th century, we were a, a country. So it was a pretty big deal to people in Pernambuco. So if you ask to a person in Pernambuco why we call our country, it's because of that. We ha also have a strong cuisine, music, of course, and carnival is a big deal. So two weeks ago, I was seeing all my friends having fun on carnival, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, this is a little bit of the culture of my my state. We have, uh, this is indigenous culture, we call Cabo Clean, and it's a very strong one. This is some, how we call Cordel. It's like with these drawings, they put like in a wood. 
and they print it on paper. This is a very famous musician, Luis Gonzaga. So he uh, sings Bayon and, sh and Xochitl, and he's a very famous all around Brazil. And this is Frevo, so people dance with it, like in Carnival. And this is a movement we have in Brazil, uh, and especially on my state and my region, called Cangasso. So people wear like these funny hats with all, all these uh, things with leather, to, uh, and they went by over the semi-arid places. So it's a very fun thing. And this is my uh, uh my city. So we have like uh, this street over there in the top right. It is called the good of uh, the street of the good Jesus, and it was elected the third street most beautiful in the world. So I'm very proud of that. We also have um this is the downtown. This is an institute we have in my city that is very famous. We have a lot of collections, and it's the carnival again. This is called Gala da Madrugada, and it's the biggest bloco, uh, bloco uh, de rua of the world. So this year, I think, was 2 million, 2 million point five people on the streets to see this uh, this one on Carnival. So it's a lot of people and a lot of fun. And I'm uh, this is my city where I live and my country where I'm from. And now I'm going to talk a little bit my, about how my exchange year is so far. So I have so many experience and I think was I was most worried when I was here. It is, oh, I'm afraid that I do not enjoy as much as I would, as I would. But I read in the second day, <laughs> I went to a, ball, a baseball game and I didn't even know what was the rules of baseball. I was just very confused. I was like, whoa, I think that's a thing. <laughs> and I saw it and I found it really fun. And also I joined volleyball. I think volleyball helped me a lot. Um. My values to go here was to meet people, to make connections, and making connections with volleyball. I have friends that I still uh, talk with. I went to varsity. This is the reason why I have my varsity letter over here, and I got very excited. Um, we also went to like Superior, and it's well, it's an amazing place. Like it's very pretty. I also have a lot of different experience, American experience like homecoming, um, watching football games. Unfortunately, we lose a lot, but that's fine. Uh, it's fun to have the experience. <laughs> but <laughs> I think the most important thing is not like, not the place, but also how you meet people. So I think meet people and have like, I more independent feeling. Like I think now I'm more confident on myself to go to places and do my own things than I used to do in my in my the beginning of my exchange year and even before. So this is like other things that I did. So going to New York, um, having the Halloween, went to Camp Enterprise with pottery also was a pretty fun thing. So thank you for that. And also uh um having the fall experience. I never had this in Brazil because it's only summer. Or summer hot or summer rainy. So we have like two different seasons that is basically the same thing. So having like, oh, a little bit, at least a little bit of snow and a little bit of fall was very fun. And also having like Thanksgiving. I never had Thanksgiving in my life. So it was fun to see the tradition. I was like, oh, this is fun. I always like read it on my English classes in Brazil, but I never really had it. So it was fun. And also, this is the moment that I changed my host families too. But this was with my first host family. My second one, we have Christmas, and it was super fun. And also, my theater. I think I really like theater. Like acting and the musical was, um, I think was very important to understand other people and to understand how to communicate with, like in the in a stage was very important. And Christmas um was a very fun time because I changed it. But at the same time, I cannot lie, I felt a lot homesick. <laughs> I was telling to you, Sophie and my host family that even though I really had a really great time because we have so many different things, like we have a 70s murder party, mystery party. So I was very like, whoa, this sounds fun. <laughs> but I felt a little homesick a little bit. But even though was I got managed that and also having a New Year's with my friends was super fun. We go went to places, we celebrate our New Year. And also I am... I'm trying to do new things. So I think like, okay, I did volleyball. That was a fun. I did um theater. Okay, that was fun. And then my friends ask, Carol, why don't you join robotics? And I say like, it could be. I can try. I never done in my life robotics. So I'm doing now robotics a little bit with my friends. I don't know how it's gonna how it's gonna go on um, when, but that's fine. We're gonna see it. 
this is also um I think Harley also helped a lot to meet new people and also like ask for example on these days I'm talking a lot with ex other exchange students how Sophie said because she helped me a lot with that to say like hey do you want to hang out today or doing something so I'm trying to do this a lot this is like one picture of my exchange students friends from Japan Sophia and Conan but also went to with Nara from Sweden um Mimi from Brazil and other countries we are trying to do a big meeting if everything go well um with um two action one two action students from Australia that they're new here and also from Belgium to try to hang out in Minneapolis because they've never been to here so it's so like I'm gonna show you good places because I live here and it's been so fun and also this is the one, the last meeting we have that was in the capital and it was so pretty inside of it. I'm really grateful that I went there and also talk again to exchange students, see our veil and our things. I think it was amazing. In general, I think my exchange year is changing me a lot. And even though I miss my family in Brazil and my friends, I don't know how I'm going to go back because it's already only four months left. And I'm like, oh, no. It's passing fast, and I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and I hope um, I'm gonna be be with this experience in all my heart because this is learning a lot that you need to have community, you you need to have independent independence, and also you need to um, have fun with it. So I think doesn't matter where you go, if you have fun, if you have people around you, if you have connections around you. And especially with Hordery, if we have so many connections with exchange students, with people and other things we I did, I think I wouldn't have a, 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 I don't know how I have this experience. So I'm really grateful. And I was actually having like a little crisis, I cannot lie, today, because it was um I was like, oh my gosh, it's already half of my exchange, my exchange year is done. And how am I supposed to do with that? And yeah, I'm very happy and thank you for all you guys. Even though um I'm not and I'm here every time I try to be a little um friendly and say to, hi to all. And also I'm really thankful. And later I'm gonna give you some gifts that I brought from Brazil. It's on my table. I'm gonna after give to you guys is some things like some uh, pencils with a lot of things of Brazil, some little other uh little gifts from Brazil if you guys want. So can, can after go to my table and I can give you a little bit. I don't know if there's to everybody because I wasn't expecting this much people, but I hope we can have enough for for everyone. So yeah, really thankful to everyone. And I'm really excited to be here and I'm very happy to have this opportunity because if you ask me two years ago, making an exchange year wasn't on my plans. I, this was really in the last minute. My godmother just said, Carol, do you want to go? So like, yes. And uh, yeah, was uh, the uh, I think this um <laughs> this decision changed my whole life, and I'm very grateful for that. So yeah, thank you very much for everything. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys have any questions for me? <laughs> yeah. So as you were walking by, I noticed on your back <laughs> some books. Can you kind of tell us about what's yeah. on your back? So um, I have my my goal. <laughs> also, one of my goals here is to get as many pins as I want and also experience that I have. So, for example, <laughs> this one is from the varsity letter. It was actually because there is a pom pom over here, so you cannot see very well. But this is the varsity letter that I got from volleyball. So in I wasn't expecting that actually. They said, like, oh, you're also from varsity and also your last year here. So you need to have a varsity letter too. I was like, oh, thank you. And I felt very happy about that. And this is um this one is when I went to um uh, with my other host family, um, me, also uh Sophie and Ariana. I think Teresa too. Was Teresa there? I can't remember, but we went to a British um British uh advertisement awards so the best as you know of the year so we put it this one I put this one here because it sounds fun like oh I've been this one with the walker so this is a good thing and this one is when I went with my friends I think in January in the country to watch style and for murder and it was pretty fun I'm also trying to put other things that I did like 
this one just like kind of like a sticker but i put it here this is when i went to new york and other things i can ask you more if you want other questions because there's so many but yeah that's right exercise uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to say, Carol, I remember when you arrived, you were very shy and very quiet. And then a couple of weeks ago when we met for dinner, we got to talk and I was like, oh, my gosh, she 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 has so much to say. And now I was telling my mom, wow, she talks like very well, like so much. And so like your English is amazing and you're very open now. So I don't know if it's part of being here. I don't know. But I've seen you change and grow in the last couple of months and that's amazing. So hopeful. I hope you feel very proud of yourself of yeah. that. <laughs> and uh, my question, I always like to talk about education. So can you tell us a little bit about how American school is different from your Brazilian school, whether it's good or bad, just differences and just a few highlights, um, because I know we had a, this conversation and it was like, very exciting for me to hear so I think it might be exciting for the group to hear as well um so I'm gonna first talk about the first thing that I noticed actually I'm I'm always like this in Brazil but here in the beginning I noticed that people are a little more close so so like oh hi and they were like hi and I'm like okay <laughs> I got it but I think now I'm getting know to people more so I cannot I can be a little bit more open as I used to be but answer the question about education, I'm actually always talking with my <laughs> with Sophie and my other host family. It is about that, whoa, it's a, very different because like um here you can choose the the things you want. So example, oh, I'm not good at chemistry, so I can choose physics or biology if I want, depending on the course you want. And in Brazil you don't. And we have to follow all the uh the classes we have. For example, I am now is having another the the junior year. I'm going to be back in junior year in Brazil, and it's more than seventeen classes that I need to attend, like with different physics, different math, um, uh, chemistry, and all the things. And also, I think that I'm not. I think the experience of having friends in school is good because I already know most of the stuff that I'm learning. Like biology, I be biology. I'm learning things that I learned in freshman year from Brazil. So I'm like, oh, this, this it isn't new. It's just like a few things more, but the general facts I, I know for sure. So I think um the education is not so hard. Also, I can relax. I never I was actually telling that I never been so relaxed about academic stuff in my life. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm enjoying my exchange year. <laughs> So I don't need to worry about to worry a lot about this. I just need to worry when I in the my last days here I need to get authorization and I think a signature from my school that I did all my things and my score. I think it's not gonna be bad. But yeah. So yeah, any questions? You can also ask me after if you want, or you can ask here, it doesn't matter. So okay. I remember having exchange students when we hosted and then I was a student exchange officer as well. And one of the things from an education standpoint that um, the uh, young woman was from South Africa, Paula, that I remember best saying she could not even get her mind around how much the teachers told them about their personal lives. So in Brazil, is there a separation between the teachers sharing their personal lives um, versus in America? Like she just couldn't believe these, like the teachers told them if they were divorced, if they were going through separation, she just couldn't get over it because it was such a separation in South Africa. A teacher would never tell you anything that you would think they were your friend or anything like that. So is it? it yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> actually in Brazil is a little similar to here but I think in Brazil is a little less title thing because here you need to say the last name of the teacher in Brazil we say the first name 
So for example, I have my teacher from biology and I say like, hey, Andre, can you come over here? I have a question. And we just say it like that. And also they're very open. I think, yeah, I think probably that's the reason that I follow them on Instagram, <laughs> even though like we don't have anything to hide. My teacher, for example, from biology, he has a ch channel on YouTube. So he has like talking all things about biology and stuff like that. And he also is very open about his life. Like he was showing to us that his son um, was a senior last year and he was just having fun with his son. Like they have like a match between the teachers and the seniors of the year from soccer. So they had there and they were, he was showing to us like the pictures of Luke, my son here. It is so fun. And he's going now. I don't know where he's going, but they're very open. I don't know other countries it's like that. I think it's a good thing because you can see that sometimes you can rely on the teachers because the teachers makes the uh, the change in a student life. So it depends also on the case, but we are also very open, probably because also of, of our culture in general, but yeah. Okay, this is not uh, questions, it's an announcement. I, once in a while, I exchange you uh, the email with uh, all my exchange students and the current outbound student to the Germany. And recently I get a report from uh, our outbound student, Penelope uh, Brazelton in Germany. Hi everyone, I filled out a report. I'm doing well, I'm well into the second, second half of my exchange. And as I expected, everything is getting a lot easier. My German is much better. And I have friends in school. I also have many rotary trips coming up, including a ski week in March and the Europe tour in April, which I'm very excited for. I think it's a good sign that I'm already sad that I have to leave. I have a break from uh, school for a week now, so I will have a busy but a fun week traveling around the different cities in my region. I also will be switching of host families in about a month. I am ex excited yet sad. I'm excited yet sad because I really like my current host family. I have met my second host family and they are also very nice people with little kids, which will be uh, uh, good to learn more German. Thank you for everything for uh, City of Lakes Rotary Club. Also, I, uh, I sent a message to the Vernon last year's inbound student. I said, how are you doing? She said, uh, fine. And uh, she missed uh, Minnesota's snow winter cold winter i i said oh well i tell you i sh showed to him a photo from here this is minnesota right now what <laughs> the other student too <laughs> the neen and another part from uh, thailand the same one so the other one is uh no response so that yeah. i just sometimes <laughs> All right. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Sophie. And if anybody wants to ask Sophie questions after, I think you want to stick around. Um, it was great to hear about all your different travels and things you've done. So um, I want to thank everybody for being here today. Thank our greeters, Andrew Hoffman, or greeter, Andrew Hoffman. Um, reflection from Tony Eamons, uh, Baby Shower, hosted by Mary Pat. And Jen, I know, contributed with the cake and so forth. And congratulations, Anna. We can't meet. We can't wait to meet the baby. Our day chair, day chair, Doug Schmidt, um, speakers, Sophie and Carol again, our Zoom masters, Brock and Greg, our guest families um, for being here today, Danielle, Sam, Colleen, Lars, and Sh Shonda, and Heather. Thanks for being here. Um, so next week, I put it up on the screen because I'm I trying to do this so you guys know what's happening in the future. Um, but Pete Gorton um, from the John, John Donaldson Black Baseball Legacy Restoration. So Pete Gordon is a Negro League historian and a founder of the Donaldson Network, a group of amateur historians dedicated to, to the rediscovery of the lost baseball career of John Weasley, if I'm saying that correctly, Donaldson, Donaldson, 
For more than 23 years, he has conducted a daily pursuit of the greatest co colored pitcher in the world. So please be here next week in person for that discussion. Um, the following week in, in March, you will not see me, unfortunately. You will see Scott, which is probably a lot better. Um, <laughs> but we will be on Zoom, so we will not be here in the room. Um, but Ad Adam, I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly, Dunning, uh, Dunnick um, from Minneapolis Downtown Council, the new president and CEO will be here, well, on Zoom to present to us. So don't show up here in March, the first two weeks. Um, with that, uh, thanks for, for joining us and go out and have a wonderful Rotary Week.